Well, hello, everybody. My name is Leo Mui. I am the manager uh, of funding programs here at Innovate. And I'd like to thank you all for uh, tuning into the uh, funding webinar for the summer 2023 call for applications for the Innovate Focus Fund. Uh, Innovate is funded in part by the Government of Canada Strategic Innovation Fund, uh, and, and in French, uh, Innovate a été financé en partie par le Fonds stratégique pour l'innovation du gouvernement du Canada et pour obtenir la France, uh, version française, française de, de, des documents et de cette présentation écrivée nous par courriel. Um, one little uh, thing to add here is that the spoken content and, and what you can see on the slides should be consistent uh, with the official guide for applications document that was sent out uh, about a couple of weeks back. But if there are any discrepancies between the guide uh, and what I say, uh, that is, if I make a mistake here, the guide for applicants uh, document is to be taken as correct. So uh, the, the Innovate Management Board and staff um, uh, work here to try to build a network that uh, uh, seeks to drive the IGT sector to success. And you know, here is how we define it. Uh, note that you know, many of these um, uh, uh, drivers of success are, 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 are aligned with the KPIs uh, that we ask uh, of you uh, when you put in your application for the focus fund. So first we want to drive technology development and commercialization. Um, so we want to see new AI assisted IGT devices out there and making an impact in both Canada and internationally that leads to positive health, social and economic uh, outcomes and benefits. And for the companies uh, who are part of our network, we want to attract capital. Uh, into your firms. We want to see continued investment into uh, strategic partnerships and research and development. We want to see you make sales uh, and make new partnerships and, and really drive the sector that way. And of course, uh, creating and maintaining the jobs, uh, especially highly uh, jobs for highly qualified personnel uh, are, are essential parts uh, of growing this industry. And lastly, IGT sector integration. We uh, are not a funding agency. We are a network. So we do want to see uh, that we build a community around the IGT uh, med tech sector uh, so that, you know, the outcomes would be more business to business, business to academic uh, relationships, partnerships and projects. And, and of course, we want to see our, our highly qualified students to be trained uh, and enter the IGT workforce. So uh, just jumping right into eligibility, uh, those, uh, so obviously first thing is that we are Innovate, so all projects must be in the uh, field of image guided therapy. Um, and, and you can speak with us if you need to clarify whether or not your specific project is considered to be a good fit for uh, or what we're looking for. Um, but, you know, the hard rules about eligibility is that the project lead for focus on projects must be a Canadian SME. And uh, the reason for that is because we, we want to see the economic output. We want to see companies driving these projects, whereas the pilot projects, we were a little flexible about whether it's an academic institution that leads or a company that leads. So that SME who leads must have been part of an Innovate project, uh, pilot fund project that had been selected. Now we know that uh, there are some people's uh, uh, um, whose projects never really ended up signing an ultimate recipient agreement with us for, for one reason or another. Uh, as long as you were selected for funding, uh, you are eligible to be a uh, project lead in focus fund rounds. Uh, except if you've already gotten a, a focus fund project where you're the project lead uh, or that you're receiving a, a big chunk of the, the funds, 50% uh, 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 of the funds on a pro uh, on another focus fund project, uh, those people will not be allowed to, to reapply. Uh, we're trying to fund a diverse group of companies. And in terms of project collaborators, 
all other Canadian corporations, academic institutions, not-for-profit organizations are eligible to participate uh, officially as project collaborator. Um, and um, each proposed project must include two project collaborators and, and one of them is the project lead. So the, the minimal number of organizations within a uh, focus on project is two. And um, just uh, as a note that uh, for us, a collaborator refers to an organization, not to an individual. So two PIs at a hospital, for example, would be considered the same collaborator uh, for the purposes of this application. And you know the these are uh, hard and fast rules, but these are things that we really strongly encourage. Um, is that you know we want to see cross country collaborations, and and we are federally funded, so we do want to make sure that you know we are funding projects from from coast to coast to coast, and so all projects are highly encouraged to have at least one third of the innovate contributions be directed to an ultimate recipient that is based outside of Ontario. Um, and, and we are, are also seeking to, to fund a broad range of different companies and academic, academic institutions. So we really want to encourage a company or, or individual PIs from playing major roles on multiple focus fund applications. You know, that may turn out to be a detriment uh, uh, to, to your projects and your applications. In terms of just scoping out the the, the projects, um, the earliest start date for this uh, round of focus fund projects is January first, twenty twenty four, but it must also start uh, only after the end of any active pilot projects you may have with us. So, um, because uh, some of our round three pilot fund projects are just getting going, uh, we do want to give some flexibility. So. Uh, for this round of the focus on the projects can range between two and three years long, uh, depending on again when the when your uh, uh, current pilot fund project may be ending. Um, but no matter when you start the project, the the focus fund project must end by December thirty first, twenty twenty six. That is an absolute deadline. There will be no extensions permitted at that time because we we'll be wrapping up our our, our, our own uh, network funding with the government uh, uh, around that time. So December 31st, 2026, all project funds must be extended by that date. There will be no extensions. And in terms of what we can provide, uh, our contribution range uh, for this application period is between $500,000 and $2 million. And that's a big range, um, but, um, we have a fixed contribution ratio for all projects at uh, one third. So for a five hundred thousand dollar project, we will expend uh, we will expect uh, expenses of one point five million dollars, and and for two million dollars, we would expect a total project size of six million dollars. So depending on your company's uh, uh, financial capacity to spend, depending on whether your project is on the short end or the long end of the allowable range, um, there is an appropriate number to ask for. Um, and, and again, that's something that you can discuss with us uh, uh, if you would like. Another note is that even if you uh, choose a certain uh, contribution uh, rate uh, at the time of application, you know we are running towards the end of our, our, our funding envelope. So we may have to reduce that contribution ratio uh, if we see there are uh, more projects that we want to support. So we will be in touch with you uh, if we need to reduce uh, uh, what your ask uh, of us is. And so just to give you a bit of an idea, these numbers are public, so they're not secret. Uh, so we have budgeted around $41 million for uh, our funding programs overall, both pilot and uh, and focus fund uh, programs. And we have already committed $29.6 million uh, to existing projects. So doing a little bit of math, uh, there's about $11 million left. And we still expect to launch another round of the pilot fund in fall 2023. So you can kind of guess about the range of, of funds we're playing with here, uh, just so that it, uh, you can decide on, on what size the project to uh, propose to us. 
here's just a summary of the timeline of uh, the application process and, and the and the focus fund uh, projects. So um, uh, I'll leave this on the screen for a bit, but I, I just bolded two of the deadlines that are the most important ones on here. The notices of intent uh, is due in a week's time on August uh, 9th, 2023, and the full submission is due on September 27th, 2023. Uh, we will go through each of these items uh, in detail over the next slide, so I'm not going to stop on them, but just want to make sure that you are aware of those two key deadlines. So as I mentioned, next week, uh, we'd like to receive uh, a notice of intent or NOI from you uh, if you are intending to apply for the focus fund. Uh, so this is a simple one page letter on uh, the project leads letterhead sent to us by email to innovate at sunnybrook.ca. Uh, we just uh, need a quick title, summary of your project, um, you know, the approximate budget size that you're asking from us, uh, the expected start and end date for your projects, uh, and uh, indicate if it is a direct continuation of any of your uh, previous pilot fund projects with us. It does not need to be, uh, but if it is, then it would be nice for, you, for us to know uh, where you're gonna be picking up from. And uh, we would also like to have uh, a listing of, of what who you expect to collaborate with. So uh, including your own organization uh, on that list, uh, please list all the, the, the people that you intend to work with and their key contact and email information and you know approximately uh, what percentage share of our funds will go to which organization. Now, this will just give us a rough idea of the number and type of application to expect. Uh, we understand that things change all the time, uh, so you're not really going to be held to anything that you say on this NOI. Um, this is also not an application gate. Uh, all those who submit an NOI are eligible to submit a full application, and, and, and um, really this is uh, a chance for, for, for us to also quickly look at uh, eligibility and then you know contact you if we have some concerns so that you know you can decide whether or not to invest the time into a full application and um you know on a very uh, 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 operational standpoint it also allows us to make sure that we have our reviewers lined up and, and resources dedicated to, to make sure that the project reviews are done uh at a you know good pace to match the timeline that we had uh, just presented. Um, and lastly, uh, please remember to, to submit this by 11.59 p.m. Pacific time uh, on August 9th uh, so that uh, we can start working on your projects. So the full application uh, is due at the end of September, again, uh, at 11.59 p.m. Uh, Pacific on, on the 27th of uh, September. So the full application and the questions that are involved are uh, is available as a Word document for you uh, to, to draft on. Um, our Smart Simple portal is still the way to submit the full application, but that's not going to open uh, until August 9th. So uh, for now, uh, you can use that Word document uh, to start looking at what we may be asking you about. Uh, it's kind of listed on screen here, and it's pretty typical questions. Um, but um, we have made some changes uh, for applicants who are returning from last year. Uh, we did hear that you know there were some uh, questions that didn't allow enough characters uh, uh, for you to give a full answer. So we've expanded uh, the character limits for some of the questions. Um, and, and note that spaces do count as characters in our system. So when you're drafting, make sure that you count the right way. Um, and you know, in, in terms of detailed questions, um, one of my favorite questions in there is a section just on risks. Uh, there are many subparts uh, of that question, and, and some other questions have a lot of subparts. So not all of these sub questions may be relevant for every project. So don't feel like you must address them all. Um, you know, trust your judgment on, on on what you need to to, to discuss. And you know. 
the, the question uh, under risks is a really good place for you to put yourselves in the minds of the reviewers and consider what possible shortcomings uh, that there are for your project, for your company, for your collaborators, et cetera, um, and, and just address those shortcomings here in this section. Um, I would just say that uh, we, we also must uh, uh, receive letters of support from all of your collaborators. Uh, this is very important for us to, to ensure that you've spoken to your collaborators about this application and that they are on board uh, to, to, to and committed to spending the, the funds and, and doing the projects as stated. Um, and, and just to know if you are working with an academic uh, organization, make sure that the PI uh, notifies the appropriate um, research office, department office, whatever they need to do um, uh, that, you know, to make their institution aware of this application. Uh, we've had several incidents where institutions were surprised that their uh, PI had been selected for funding uh, at the point of contract uh, signing, and, and that really derails the whole whole process. Um, so make sure that you know all your collaborators are, are really on board and they understand that you know there's a very tight timeline between project selection, the project beginning, and getting contracts signed. Um, I, I think all of you on this call and and probably uh, all of you still watching this webinar uh, uh, by this time have been part of a pilot fund project with us uh, uh, already. So you understand what type of project activities are allowed. So we fund R&D activities um, uh, between, you know, TRLs level, TRL levels one to seven, and we, you know, we allow project activities broadly in the realm of hardware and software development, prototyping, user testing, preclinical and clinical validation, and and you know, patent filing. Um, so we don't um, allow activities such as uh, sales and, and marketing and uh, and travel to to conferences. Those are absolutely important and we understand that that's not the nature of this funding so make sure that when you discuss project activities they're really really focused on on uh, the r d aspects of course you can mention what business development and commercialization aspects uh, you will conduct but those uh, will not those types of activities will not be reimbursed through this fund so uh eligible project costs um the Strategic Innovation Fund um, uh, is quite strict about project costs. So everything must be real, reasonable, and incremental. So you know, real means that your project costs must be actual expenses, expenditures that can be traced. Um, so um, in-kind expenses um, and, and you know, uh, founders uh, paying themselves uh, through uh, uh, sweat equity, that stuff can't be quantified. They're not bank transactions. So those uh, costs cannot be included as part of your project costs. Um, but, you know, real salaries that go out uh, uh, through um, a payroll system that has pay stubs and and, and, and um, banking statements backing those costs up, those will be allowed. And for every... Uh, expenditure that you do a claim to us after you know uh, your project has been successfully uh, selected, you will have to provide documentation such as invoices and receipts and, and, and such. So please make sure that you you, you keep those things around. Um, and you know it, it also costs have to be reasonable. They have to be in general aligned with uh, what market prices are for certain things. Anything that is exceptionally uh, Highly, highly priced. We will be coming and asking you for documentation on, on how you justify uh, that higher price and we may not, or may not allow those costs to be reimbursed. Um, and of course, uh, incremental costs just means that like, these are specifically tied into your project activities and they're not just um, costs that you would otherwise uh, have incurred. 
These are the general project cost categories that you will find in your budget notebook. Um, they're pretty clear what they are. Um, I just want to note that for uh, direct labor, we have a very specific way of calculating hourly wage and that must be based on uh, either the hourly wage stated in an employment contract or by that person's annual salary divided by the number of total hours worked in a year. And um, and uh, for subcontractors, uh, you have to note that like if you have two organizations uh, in your uh, project, they cannot subcontract and be a collaborator on the project. Uh, so we will be looking for those uh, as we as we go through your budget. And uh, one more note, I would like to say that uh, please do check in with us if you're planning on submitting costs in the land building and building improvement category as it is complex to explain what is and what isn't allowed in that category. Um, so rental costs, for example, for your office and labs are generally not considered eligible. So again, please check in with us uh, if you're planning on using that category. In terms of just guidelines to the project budgeting process, what we want to see is, uh, as we discussed earlier in my first slide, uh, we want to see uh, more jobs maintained and, and created. So uh, that direct labor category should be heavily used. And we want to see a lot of the R&D work happen in the companies uh, compared to uh, if, if you have an academic partner. Now, we understand that um, there are uh, companies that are earlier stage and have a uh, have a tight relationship with a university lab, and so you know we understand that if there's still some significant academic labor at the beginning of the projects, but towards the end we should see a transition away from that uh, and having more of the labor and research be done on the company side. Um, and then um, my, my, the second point here is uh, minimizing low cost materials and other low cost items. Um, you know, we've seen some claims where, where we're seeing, you know, a $50 uh, uh, tub of, of, of nails or something like that claimed. And, and we just want to note that it's not like those aren't necessarily eligible, but uh, an invoice claim for fifty dollars require about as much work from you and from us as an invoice for a fifty thousand dollar piece of equipment. So um, we would rather you focus on the larger spend items for the focus fund uh, uh, than than for the low cost items. Um, and lastly, we do limit uh, foreign costs to uh, ten percent of total project costs, and every foreign cost that you plan to incur is subject to approval uh, uh, by Innovate. Um, so what are forward costs? So this is, again, something that you may be, uh, uh, it may easily confuse you. So uh, any foreign labor, so anybody working abroad uh, for a subsidiary or for another company um, outside of Canada is considered to be foreign costs. Uh, if you hire, for example, a um, patent uh, lawyer from, Florida for your US submissions, that's a foreign contractor cost. Uh, and if you conduct your clinical studies in Europe, that's uh, you know another foreign cost. So those together, added together, can only be up to 10% of your total project cost. And again, we will be asking you uh, why you're doing this uh, work outside of Canada. Can you prove that you cannot do this work or feasibly cannot do this work within Canada? Now. What this does not count is if you need to buy materials from a supplier from outside of Canada, but then you're shipping that material to your place in Canada to do work on, um, that is not considered a foreign cost. Uh, we really, really want you to be successful in your application. Uh, we know that it takes a lot of time and effort to put together. Um, so, you know, we, we do have a finite amount of funding uh, and so likely not every worthy project will get selected just because uh, of the numbers that we have. So we want to give you the best shot. We offer pre-submission coaching. Uh, so for the first time this year, uh, we will be requiring you to send us a draft uh, copy of your budget uh, just for a review. 
again, uh, we want to make sure that you don't put anything in there that would be considered ineligible and that you'll end up having uh, to, to, to rebalance later or in, in the middle of the review process. We don't want you to get dinged uh, for those sort of uh, 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 errors of, 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 or misunderstanding of, of our cost principles. So uh, by December, by September 6th, please submit to us a draft of your budget. Again, doesn't have to be final. You can make changes afterwards, but we just want to have a quick look to make sure that, you know, you have everything in the right categories and that nothing in there would immediately uh, cause red flags. Now, uh, what's optional is application coaching. And so last year, I believe that most applicants uh, opted in for this, is that you can send us a copy of your draft uh, application and innovate staff. Uh, either me or, or one of my colleagues will read through it and give you uh, general feedback, maybe a little bit of, of, of um, tips on how to reframe things or how to explain things more clearly. So we don't guarantee that we will address uh, everything that a, a reviewer may, but um, it is a good opportunity for you to, to you know, get an outsider's point of view of, of, of how your uh, application is shaping up. Now, the requests for both of these items are required, uh, sorry, are, 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 must come into our inbox by end of day, September 6th, so that we have enough turnaround time between then uh, and the due date. Uh, I see that uh, there are, are some questions in Q&A, and I'll address those at the end. So another optional element um, is uh, we've included a suggested expert reviewer form. Um, this is a chance for you to uh, select up to three experts in the field of your application to act as the scientific and technical reviewers on your project. Um, you know, we just need uh, to make sure that there's no conflict of interest between you and that reviewer, um, but you know we're happy to to, to look into uh, your recommendations uh, when we are selecting re appropriate peer reviewers for your project, um, and that form is also due on September sixth. Um, again, we're not really a funding agency per se; we are a debt rip, so we're really here to help. We really want to make sure that you have a successful. Uh, uh, application process. So please send any questions you have to innovate at sunnybrook.ca. Um, either I or one of my colleagues will, will be responding. Um, we can we can meet through Zoom to discuss things if you want, um, but make sure that you do uh, uh, put in any important questions by September 13th, uh, 2023. So that's the latest day that we will guarantee that we can give you a proper response. Uh, any questions that come between then and the application due date, we'll try to respond to it. But again, th that is our last date for a guaranteed response. So let's talk a little bit about post uh, post submission uh, review process. So each application will be just quickly checked for basic eligibility criteria. We don't expect any applicants to, to be bounced out at this point because we should have uh, flagged anything uh, at the NOI stage, but you know sometimes changes may cause um, problems uh, between that stage and, and the full application. Um, and there will be two review panels that will be reviewing your application in parallel. One is the aforementioned scientific and technical review panel that will look at the scientific and technical aspects uh, of your project. And the other is really looking at the commercialization uh, potential and the impact of your project on our network and on Canada. There is, is uh, a listing of the full uh, evaluation criteria and the questions that we use to guide our reviewers in the guide for applicants document. So please review those. And, and as you're drafting your answers to, to our questions in the application, make sure that you know you are answering uh, most of the uh, guided questions that we give to our reviewers. Um, and uh, something that we, we implement just for the focus fund is a, uh, a meeting with reviewers. So 
every eligible application that comes in, uh, we will arrange a 45 minute uh, meeting between uh, the project lead and uh, at least one of the reviewers uh, sometime in October or November uh, at a time that works for everybody. So those meetings are a great opportunity to get extra points across uh, that didn't fit in the application uh, or to update the reviewers on any new developments that may have happened between the date of the submission and the meeting date. So, you know, typically the meeting will, will start off with a, a 15 minute uh, review uh, of the company and the project. Um, and then there will be a 15 to 30 minute uh, round of questions and discussion. So by the point of this meeting, the reviewers should have already finished reading your application at least once. So they should have some background on, on what your project is. And so be prepared for, for questions that may be a little bit more probing or deep. If you want other collaborators in your projects to attend, just let us know. But as a project lead, we'll let you steer the bus on that. So after that meeting, uh, the reviewers will uh, use the information that they have from your application and that they've gleaned from that meeting, uh, uh, along with comments from, from Innovate staff about how the performance of your pilot fund project, uh, and all together put in the scores and comments and a recommendation to fund or to not fund uh, uh, a, a particular project a particular application. And uh, those scores, comments, and recommendations will be then sent to our management board uh, who will make the final decisions. And, and, and part of their decisions uh, uh, will obviously uh, 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 come from the fact that we need to do, uh, we need to have a, a certain amount of geographic distribution to our projects. Um, and the management board will also decide whether or not to reduce contributions uh, to any specific, any specific project. Um, and uh, we think that by January 2024, we can provide applicants with decisions. Some quick tips about um, uh, this application process. Carefully read the guide for applicants. It is a long document, but we try to put a lot of detail and, and hopefully answer most of your questions in that document. Um, but it's important for you to understand uh, the the parameters and and the instructions um, so that you can you won't uh, uh, be dinged for any. Uh, technical reasons uh, to do with your application. So if you have any questions, please do reach out. Um, engage your collaborators like now and work with them on their application and, and draft out things and, and to make sure that everybody has uh, appropriate budget set aside for this project in case it does get selected. Um, and, um, you know, we, we do look for the evidence of, of strong engagement between collaborators. Um, so, you know, whatever you can demonstrate through the application or that, you know, uh, meeting with the reviewers on how all of the collaborators are, are rowing the same boat, uh, the better. And um, yeah, ensure that uh, everybody who's looking to, to, to get funding uh, understand the stipulation that's in the ultimate recipient agreement. Now, all project leads have, it, have read through the agreement uh, for your pilot fund project. The agreement is very similar for the focus fund. We've included a template version of it in our email out to you, and, and I'll include a link to that later in this presentation as well. So um, there is absolutely, uh, it's imperative to make sure that everybody at least read through it to make sure that there are no showstoppers. There are certain uh, IP terms in there uh, that we must uh, uh, enforce uh, based on our obligations to the government. So if any of those things are showstoppers for your organizations, then maybe you should not invest too much time into that uh, full application. And of course, lastly, I think every uh, granting agency uh, tries to say this, but please do create an account on, on the portal. Uh, please try, uh, upload some questions and, and plan to submit your application on that portal as early as possible. It is a piece of software. 
things may break, things may not work for your browser. Um, and certainly I'm not gonna be up at 11.59 Pacific uh, on September 27th uh, to, to provide tech support. So uh, make sure that you try to get those uh, forgiveness in as early as you can. Um, and in terms of running the project, um, uh, because this is a multi-year, multi-million possibly uh, project, we do stage funding. So at the point of project selection by our management board, we do approve the full value of your project over all the years, but we're only committed to uh, funding the first 12 months of your project. Now, the future amounts will only be released uh, after we conduct midterm review meetings, uh, which happens every year. Uh, we want to make sure that projects are, are proceeding uh, to, uh, as expected. We want to make sure that you know spending is as expected to your budget. And there are no spending shortfalls and that you know you have achieved any uh, milestones such as fundraising goals uh, 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 so that we can be confident that you would be able to uh, make the expenditures for the next year. Um, what staging of funding means for especially smaller companies is that you, know, you don't have to have all the matching funds available at the time of the project starts, uh, but but you can slowly raise that throughout uh, uh, the two to three years uh, of your innovate project. And um, you know, unfortunately, when when milestones are not met, and and, and um, we believe that the project will not uh, end in success, um, we we might decide to end your project and reallocate those funds to other projects. So we haven't had to do that yet, um, but uh, just warning that, you know, we, we, we can't guarantee you the full amount of your projects uh, at the time of project selection. And I think this is my last slide. Um, we did send a, an email to everybody and we're, we will be sending another one with a link to this webinar uh, afterwards as well. Um, there's a bunch of documents associated with the calls of application, um, for calls for applications that you can download. All of these documents, uh, I, I believe, other than the notice of intent document, will be available for download on the Smart Civil Portal when that uh, gets updated. But um, the key is you want to read through them. You can go to uh, http bit.ly slash focus hyphen fund hyphen 2023, that short link will um, get you to the links to all of these um, important documents that you should read through and fill out uh, for your application. So I, I've talked for about 40 minutes and um, if you have any questions, uh, please use the Q&A function here um, and uh, I will wait for those to come in. Yeah, so I got a question on why did we decide to allow only SMEs to be project leads? And, you know, that again, we are uh, we are a network trying to build out the Canadian IGT sector um, and, 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 and economic development is a, a big part of our uh, uh, targets. So we do want to make sure that all of these projects are, are, commercial, are commercialization focused. Mm -hmm. And um, the best way to do that is to have a company endorse them by becoming a project lead. Okay, so uh, the question is, uh, why do all collaborators have to receive 33% of their uh, expenditures? Um, so, it's just to make uh, the, the project budgets a little easier to deal with. We do know that there are situations where um, uh, an industry partner wants to, to, to send more funds to the academic partner. Um, and in those cases, you could do that outside the realm of the project. We just will reimburse everybody for the same 33% um, uh, rate, uh, unless of course we reduce that number, but everybody will receive the same collaboration, uh, sorry, it's the same contribution ratio. So I'll take this opportunity to, to thank you for your attendance and for your interest in the Innovate uh, Focus Fund. Uh, our general email here is on screen right now, innovate at sunnybrook.ca. 
please do check in with us if you're interested in applying and you have any questions. Um, we are here to help. I've said this many times. Um, but um, yeah, thank you again for attending. Uh, we look forward to reading your applications very soon. Bye-bye.